A couple days ago, the Vue account tweeted this out, a release of the Vue 3.5 beta. So as the good, highly consistent Vue content creator that I am, I started scrolling through the change log. And one thing that stood out to me was this PR for lazy hydration strategies for async components. For a quick summary, it means that we can delay hydration for async components, meaning that our app can load and hydrate faster, and then we have more control over when async components hydrate. So in this video, we're gonna look at hydration, async components, the changes coming in Vue 3.5, and then some early stage Nuxt work that really shows what kind of possibilities this approach unlocks. So with the server-side rendered app, hydration is a step that converts a static HTML sent from the server into a fully interactive Vue app. So on the server, JavaScript will run to create the requested page. It sends it as static HTML, and since it's static, it's not interactive. To make it interactive, your browser will need your main JavaScript file, and it will create the same Vue app that was run on the server. So now on the client side, you have a Vue app where components are matched to the proper DOM nodes, and they all have the right event listeners to handle interactivity. So the way I see it, the total time for hydration has two steps. The first one is downloading all of the JavaScript, and the second one is actually executing it and hydrating our app. And there are a lot of ways that people are looking to optimize this. One approach is lazy loading, where we use code splitting to make our initial JavaScript smaller, and then only load and execute more JavaScript when it's needed. And then an example of another approach is server components, where some components are just never sent to the client side, and since there's no JavaScript sent, there's nothing to run. But let's go back to async components. By default, when you build the plain view app, it creates a thick JavaScript file that has everything your app needs to run. Dependencies, components, logic, all all bundled into this one JavaScript file. And as your app grows, this file can get pretty large, meaning it will take both a long time to download and a longer time to execute. And if you have certain components that aren't needed on the initial page load, like a pop-up for example, it means that there's no reason to have it in this initial JavaScript file. We can use define async component and lazy loading to create different chunks for these component trees. This makes our initial JavaScript smaller and means that we can load these components on demand when they're needed. Typically when we think of lazy loading components in view, we think of conditionally rendered components. For example, a component that's not rendered at all until a button is clicked. But the new hydration strategies gives us control beyond just simple conditional rendering. So let's try it out. I used Vue plugin SSR to create a simple server-side rendered app with Vue. And in this component, we have an input that's tied to a V model and then something that renders out hello name. Finally, so we can see whether this component has been hydrated or not, there's a mounted variable that's set to true during the on-mounted lifecycle hook. And depending on the value of this variable, the background color will either be green or red. Now let's add this component to a page. First, we're gonna use it without async component and just just import it and throw it in our template. When our page loads, we can see that there's a flash of red and then our component hydrates immediately and turns to green. So when we type in our input, the text here also updates. But now let's try the new hydration strategies. If instead of importing it, we use define async component, use loader to lazy load our component, there's a new hydrate property that we can use to choose our hydration strategy. And for this example, I'm gonna use hydrate on interaction and pass a click. So our component will only hydrate when we click on it. So if we reload our page, we'll see that our box is red and stays red. And if we type in our input, nothing happens. And that's because this component hasn't been hydrated and mounted into our view app. But if we refresh and first click on our component, we'll see that it hydrates, everything turns green. And now when we type, we get the expected behavior. And this is just one of the strategies. The other ones are hydrate on idle, which waits till the browser is idle, hydrate on visible, which uses intersection observer to hydrate when a component intersects with the viewport, hydrate on media query, which is useful for mobile only elements, or like we saw hydrate on interaction, which can take any sort of event. And if none of these fit, you can always define your own custom strategy. But to be honest, I don't think I'm gonna write code like this that often. The first reason is that this feature controls hydration, not necessarily loading. For example, in the code we wrote, when we load our page, we can see that we're still fetching the JavaScript for the foo component, even if it's not running and hydrating right away. This could just be I'm using it wrong. I mean, this is early and there's no docs, but it kind of goes into the second reason I'm not gonna write code like this. And that's because Nuxt is a thing. Even the second bullet of this PR says that the design for this feature is intentionally low level and that tools like Nuxt can add compiler syntax sugar on top of it. And lucky for us, I found someone working on it. It's a draft PR, so do with that information what you will, but Galactic Hypernova on GitHub has actually been working on this since March 24th, doing a lot of this work in parallel to the view work. In fact, the day I'm recording this, it was just refactored to use those new view hydration strategies under the hood. And this is pretty sick so far. It adds on to Nuxt's lazy prefix for creating asynchronous components and allows us to delay hydration just by adding another prefix after lazy, like lazy visible, lazy idle, or lazy event. Let's look at how this works. Let's say we have that same foo component as earlier. Anywhere in our Nuxt app, we can say lazy event foo, pass it a hydrate prop, and use a helper called create event loader to say that we want to hydrate on a click. And this lazy event component does a lot of that define async component magic for us. And the coolest thing is that if we run this and check our network tab, we see that we're not even loading that JavaScript for our foo component. But as soon as we click, that JavaScript will get fetched and then execute to hydrate our component. 
A common use case I can see for this is only loading and hydrating components once they're visible on the screen. So if we just say lazy visible foo and give it a thick margin on top, we'll see that it's not loaded. And then as we scroll in and finally becomes visible, that JavaScript will get downloaded and execute. And things like this will be a cool way to make sure your app loads fast and is interactive as soon as possible. But overall, this stuff is still a little bit away, 3.5 just hit beta, but it had me so excited that I had to come back and make a video about it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.